Why are you solely focused on Bitcoin? I've heard phrases recently like uh, boomer coin and we've seen Ethereum um, take up more trading volume and on platforms like Robinhood. So why focus only on on uh, Bitcoin? Why not hedge a little bit better? Well, I think everything else is linked to Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is the reserve currency of you know, all crypto tokens and altcoins and whatnot. Um, for they, now, though, right? It's you no. don't you don't see that dominant. You think forever? It's forever. Bitcoin is the only one that really matters. Everything else is sort of like a, a company. Um, they're just pretending to be decentralized, you know, dino, decentralized in name only. Whereas Bitcoin is actually decentralized and had organic growth and organic adoption. And you make that the, argument about Ethereum too, even even with its role, especially in NFTs and blockchain technology. You would say well, that. But the interesting Ethereum? thing is there there is no loyalty to Ethereum. When whenever Ethereum gets clogged, people just migrate to other chains. You see that uh, with you know a number of their competitors, and people just migrate off and they go somewhere else. And uh, there is really no incentive to stay with Ethereum other than people that you know made the network and operate the network. That's fascinating. I'll tell our producers if we hear anything in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter, uh, let us know. Um, I, have, I haven't really heard that. I've heard that, you know, you're going to have a few cryptocurrencies that will be dominant. Uh, someone once told me it'll be like precious metals. You have gold and silver and platinum. But are you saying that you think there's only going to be one and by far Bitcoin's going to be the dominant crypto? Definitely. I think the, the use case for Bitcoin is really money reimagined, money 2.0. And none of the other cryptos can can accomplish that just because you know it, it is created by a group of people and managed by a group of people, and it, it's not really decentralized. A lot of them, it's difficult for any normal person to run a node, a full node. Whereas with Bitcoin, you can do that. And the only way to achieve a real decentralized global currency like Bitcoin is to have the regular people being able to access and those the rules of the network being able to be immutable and unchangeable. Right. It's interesting. I didn't think our conversation would take this direction, but I'm really I'm really fascinated by it. Um, OK, then. And I know this is on the way other end of the spectrum, perhaps. But what are your thoughts on Dogecoin? I mean, yes, you say that Bitcoin is money reimagined and Dogecoin doesn't have those kinds of ambitions. But in terms of like practical uses, it's transactional uses. No one wants to spend a Bitcoin because it's volatile and could be worth a lot of money. Whereas it feels like, you know, people are more willing to spend their Dogecoin because what else are they going to do with it? <laughs> well, you know, Dogecoin has its use memes, case as a, you know, a fun joke currency and people like Elon Musk have fun with it. But you more know, than having fun with it. I mean, what I'm saying though is people think that it's a serious, you know, cryptocurrency. It started as a joke. Well, I think it's still a joke, but you know, people can think what they want. But it's a common misconception that Bitcoin is volatile. I think if you look at Bitcoin on a, a daily basis, then yes, it is. It, it can have these movements up and down. But on a long enough time horizon, Bitcoin just goes up, number go up, and it, it is a store well, of value, and it can be spent. What um, about the crypto winter? It didn't just go up; it was down for a very long time. I didn't see any crypto winter. After 2017, Bitcoin stayed at lower levels for a very long time. I don't know. When I got into Bitcoin, it was a couple hundred dollars. So for me, it's just been going up. <laughs> okay. If you got in early enough, fine, fine. But if you're the regular investor, I mean, it is, it's hard to argue that it's not volatile. Well, the important thing to understand is we are still very early. Like, uh, Deirdre, Deirdre yeah. you and I are talking about Dogecoin. That's how early we are. Um, <laughs> you can think of this like back in the day when uh, gold and silver um, we're still in its in its formative stages and no one knew that gold would become the dominant one. People might have thought silver or copper would be dominant. So these are the kind of discussions that are being uh, had out in the ecosystem. So we are still very, very early. And uh, it's a, another common misconception that you can't spend Bitcoin. Like people are spending Bitcoin. Um, in uh, you know a couple of days, El Salvador is rolling out their Bitcoin law and people will be using Bitcoin as legal tender. And they're using it and transacting on the Lightning Network, which is a network that allows for instantaneous, almost free transactions. So Bitcoin is a medium of exchange now. Uh, I mean, it, it becoming that way, but I don't think in a major way um, quite yet. But do you think ultimately that trend continues? People will use it as a medium of exchange and less as a store of value? Definitely. I think Bitcoin is all three things. It is a 
store of value, a medium of exchange, and it will become a unit of account. It's already a unit of account for the Lightning Network. When people are uh, tipping each other and making you know small transactions, they're uh, they're denominating those in satoshis, the smallest unit of a Bitcoin. Okay.